In this video, we'll be focusing on creating an isometric drawing based on a given multi-view drawing. To be able to do this, the first thing we need to know are the types of surfaces that may appear on multi-view diagrams. The first type of surface is called a principal surface. It appears as its true size and shape in one of the three views and as edge in the others. The next type of surface is an inclined surface. This has a characteristic shape in two of the views, commonly a rectangle, but it never actually appears as its true size, and also it's an edge in the third view. Commonly it'll be a slanted edge in comparison to the other visible lines. Lastly, we have an oblique uh, surface, which is a characteristic shape in all three views. In other words, it may appear as a triangle in all three view, views but it never actually appears as its true size in any of the views. We'll look at an example that contains all three of these so that you can get a clearer understanding of the difference in those three types of surfaces. <clears throat> Here's an example of a principal surface. You'll notice that on the top view it appears as a rectangle, and that rectangle coincides with the red lines shown on the front and right side view. Here's an inclined surface. On two of the views, that inclined surface looks as a rectangle, but on the third view, the front view, it's simply a line. Again, it's really common to be able to see inclined surfaces that the line is kind of at a slant in comparison to the others. Here's an example of an oblique surface. This is one where the characteristic shape is a triangle, but it's never its true size in any of these shapes. Let's look at an object that has all three surfaces. Before we do that though, here's a set of six steps for a drawing an isometric based on a given multi-view. The first thing we'll do is the same first thing we do for any isometric drawing. That is, we'll sketch the box for the isometric view, figuring out the height, width, and depth of our object. Then we'll identify the type of each surface. We'll draw those surfaces on the isometric. We'll compare the views. We'll kind of look at what has been carved away and then we'll com complete our drawing. The way I like to think about it is if I start off with a block of wood and then based on how the surfaces appear on the multi-view, I'm carving away blocks or chunks of that wood. Let's see an example. Here's the multi-view that we're given. <clears throat> it's a fairly complicated one. It does have an example of all three of the types of surfaces. For starters, step one is to draw that block that has the same dimensions. So if I look at the multi-view, I notice that it looks like it's either 10 or 11 blocks across. One, two, three, It's 11 blocks across, so I drew something that was 11 by 5 down and 5 over here. So we have a 11 by 5 by 5 block that we've drawn. Then I start looking at my surfaces. Now, it's really up to you as to which, which surface you choose first. In this case, I've chosen a principal surface first. The one that I've chosen, I'm focusing on the right view, appears as a square in this right view, and then appears as a line in the front view and a line in the top view. Those two lines are useful for showing you exactly where it is located, and the square shows you its shape. So I know that it is a three by three square that is located four blocks from uh, kind of that right face and um, and goes back three blocks as well. And so I drew that in my pictorial or isometric up here. Here's another surface. This one's an inclined surface. I could tell from the fact that on the front view it's a slanted line and then it appears as a rectangle on the other two views. 
That slanted line happens to match up with the line that I just finished drawing for this square. Now, a lot of times when I'm choosing these surfaces, I'll kind of stick to one drawing. Um, and so here you'll notice that I drew the top left corner of the front of the right hand side. And now I'm doing the bottom left corner of the right hand side. Next, I'll deal with this big long line that's here. That corresponds to this kind of weird shape here. Once again, a principal uh, surface. And that principal surface also corresponds to this solid line right here. So I drew that in over here. Here's an example of an oblique surface. It's kind of a strange little thing. It has three triangles in each corner. It looks something like that on our actual isometric. Now, here's one of the weird sections. It is a principal surface once again. It has this very strange shape. And then you'll notice uh, it's a little bit hard to see here, but really it's the solid line on the top of this drawing and the solid line on the top of this drawing. So I've gone in and kind of filled that shape in on my drawing up here. Again, another principal surface. And yet another principal surface. Finally, I have one inclined surface left. And I'm able to tell that it's inclined because of this hidden line that's shown in here. So that hidden line tells me, hey, there's something that's inclined that's hidden from my right hand view. And that appears as the rectangles on the front and top view. Almost done. You'll notice the only difference between the previous slide and this slide was that I had to kind of fill in the rest of the visible lines. So here's the example we're going to work on. One thing I'll point out before we even get started is that you'll notice that the visible lines are all slightly shifted over from the grid lines. Unfortunately, that's a default from the textbook that I took this diagram from, so there's not a whole lot I can do about it. You'll have to use your imaginations to imagine that all these visible lines line up perfectly with the grid lines. As we go through this example, you'll find that in some ways going from multi-view to isometric really takes some practice. It's a bit more challenging than going from isometric to multi-view. But we always start with the first step, and that's drawing a box that has the same length, width, and depth as our object. I can tell the length is six squares, the depth is four, and the height is four. So as I'm going through, I'm going to double my dimensions since I have space to do that, which means I will draw a box that is 12 by 8 by 8. Once I get my three principal axes in there, like I have here, I will finish off my block, making a nice rectangular prism. Okay, so once I have that nice rectangular prism in there, the next step is to start cutting things away. And really, this is a matter of preference as to where you start. There's no right or wrong place to start. The first thing that jumps out to me and where I'm going to start is this object that appears as a square on the left-hand side of the front face. From the top view, I can tell that this square goes all the way touching the front face. And I can also see that in this right hand view as well. So I will draw that square shape on that front face itself. And I can tell from my other two views 
that this is one square in depth. So on my drawing it is two squares or two triangles in depth and two triangles um, kind of in height as well. So that's my first kind of chunk that's coming from this diagram. The next thing that really sticks out to me, no pun intended there, is this square on the right hand side. I can tell from my top that this is all the way at the back of my object and I can also see that on the right hand view. And it goes all the way to the edge on the right hand view. So what I can do is draw that two by four rectangle on the right hand view. And then I can make that into this protruding square. Now, of course, I know that uh, this does have a hole cut into it, but I'm gonna worry about that at the very end. I wanna get the shape just right first. Now, looking at my right hand view, sorry, my front view, rather, I'll notice that there is nothing that goes kind of beyond this square. In other words, the rest of this space kind of continues that way. But I can also tell from the right hand view that there is this step feature going on here. So I'm gonna work on that next. I can see from the front view and the top view that that step feature kind of occurs four blocks out. In other words, it kind of occurs where this thing ends here. It's as if this goes straight up and then we go down one, over one, and down one. And I see that there happens to be a solid line. Ooh, I'm not quite down one over one and down one. Let's fix that. We're supposed to go over two. I can tell that from the top view. I noticed my mistake that this was two blocks wide here. So four here, right? Then I go down one over one and down one. And I'll be doing that really on both sides here. And luckily that matched up with where my square started, which is good because that's what I needed it to do. Now, this step looks a little bit weird. It kind of looks like it's missing something. And that's because I noticed that it's missing this line straight across here to show that step. And then if I look on the front view here, I can see that this kind of space that I would see right here in the front view, that's this. And so this line goes down, and on here it goes down three blocks. So on here it's gonna go down six. And then it's gonna go over four on my drawing, which was two on the original drawing. I'm almost done here. Notice that I need to connect this so I'll connect this to my square. And then I always like to double check. This strange shape that I made here, it matches up dimensionally with the strange shape in my original drawing. So like I said, some of this is really just trying to picture what the real object looks like. The last thing that this is missing is this hole that we can tell is cut into there from the front face and we can see the hidden and center lines in the top and right hand view. That hole is centered in my object. On this original drawing, it has a diameter of one block or a radius of half a block. So here it's going to have a diameter of two and a radius of one. And remember, anytime we're drawing a circle on an isometric, we have to draw a box that has dimensions of the radius or diameter, really. Then we draw these cross lines. 
Then we do tangent lines, which are little dashed lines that go through the center. And then we do arcs connecting our tangent points. Now, just a reminder that in isometric, we do not have hidden or center lines in our drawings. So, just the simple circle is all you need. No hidden or center lines needed here. The last task is to darken in all the visible lines so that we can see what's visible and what was just there to aid us in the drawing. When you're finished darkening in all those visible lines, my biggest suggestion is to go through and check. Ask yourself if this is what I was given, this isometric, would I draw this exact same multi-view? Look at all those lines on the multi-view and make sure that you have those lines on your isometric as well. Some of the lines that are commonly missed are things like this line in the step right here. That can be easy to look past. However, that line does appear on the isometric, so it is an important one. Okay, I think I'm done here. Taking a look at all my views. If I were looking from the front, I would see this square. I'd see this kind of sideways L shape. And I would see this rectangle. And then I'd see this square with the hole in the middle. And that's exactly what I see up here. Looking at my right hand view, I'd see this rectangle over on the side with the hidden and center lines in it. I'd see this odd shape right here, which is exactly what I'd see. And then this rectangle right there sticking out in the front. From the top view, I've got this rectangle and that rectangle and that rectangle and that rectangle. So everything matches up and that means I have successfully drawn my isometric that correlates with this multi-view drawing.